Good afternoon, everyone. I will call the Community Services Subcommittee meeting to order. Item number two is our disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Item three is delegations. And we do have a delegation for today. Item 3.1 is a presentation by the Stratford Basketball Association. And we have representatives, the Stratford Basketball Association have requested to address our subcommittee. Those being Lori Belanger, Brian Cooper, and Michael Bartlett. May I please have someone make the motion to hear the delegation? Moved by Councillor Burback. All in favor? And that is carried, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, if I may ask, could you please bring on the line our, our delegation? So through the chair, uh, presently we have Lori Belange and Brian Cooper on the line. Uh, Lori and Brian, can you hear us? Yes, we can. Perfect. Um, just before we get started, uh, the presentation, will we, we be sharing that, uh, Madam Clerk, or will we just be going off our own notes that we have before us? Through the chair, I'll be sharing my screen. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you are ready, uh, Lori and Brian, I'd ask you for you to proceed. Great. Thank you for the opportunity to present our proposal to you today. Our group consists of myself, Lori Belanger, my husband, Brian Cooper, and Michael Bartlett. Uh, Michael is on a different city council call at the moment, though, so I'm not sure if he's going to be able to join us or not. Uh, all three of us are Stratford residents. I've been a member of the Stratford Basketball Association for the past decade as a, both a board member as well as a coach of our son's team. Brian is the current chairperson of Canada Basketball, and Michael is the chief operating officer of Canada Basketball. And at one time or another, all three of us have worked for the Toronto Raptors. So collectively, we are all very passionate about basketball in Canada. Today, though, we are here as residents of Stratford who are keen on building an outdoor basketball facility in our city. As we have outlined in our proposal that you have, we feel that there is a need for this type of court in Stratford, and I will ask my husband, Brian, to summarize our rationale outlined in the proposal. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, as as you see from our proposal, basketball is the number one growing sport in this country. Uh, it's appeal to uh, gender equality, to diversity, uh, to uh, accessibility in terms of and affordability uh, has pushed it to the forefront in this country. Uh, our women uh, at, a, at a national level are number four in the world. Our men, unfortunately, just didn't uh, make the Olympic qualifying tournament, but we have more uh, men in the NBA uh, and women in the WNBA other than the United States than any country in the world. Basketball in Stratford is currently has taken off over the last eight years that we've been uh, participating in the Stratford Basketball Association. And when you look uh, at the appeal of it and the growth of it, uh, what is sorely missing is the opportunity uh, for children and adults to play the game. Uh, when you compare it to our other outdoor uh, public sport access in Stratford, soccer fields, football fields, rugby fields, there are 14. There are 11 baseball fields, the pickleball courts, which is relatively a new sport, has come on strong, and there's 10 availability uh, available courts, tennis courts and volleyball courts. Uh, and needless to say, our, our uh, hockey needs in our community uh, are well met as well. Uh, what is apparent is we need more basketball courts. Uh, what we're proposing here is to uh, build a court uh, that is for the public use, uh, that is for the use by the school boards as well, uh, that will be a full-size NBA court, which is 94 by 50, uh, and there will also be an additional four half-court hoops uh, going the other way. So this could be utilized for curriculum programming. It could be utilized for camps. It can be utilized uh, for uh, multiple uh, games be going at once. Um, we intend for this to be fully funded privately, uh, and what we're asking for our council and the city is approval to provide the land, uh, the power, uh, the insurance, and the ongoing maintenance, which I think Brad has outlined to you is minimal. Uh, to date, we have raised about $51,000 in, uh, 
in cash just from donations from individuals, uh, and we've outlined that as well. Uh, we have got uh, value in kind from companies uh, like Culleton's Electrical uh, and Ideal Supply and Feltz Design and NBA Canada that is uh, uh, allowing us to mitigate the cost to do this. Uh, we're going to be applying for more funds uh, from uh, not only individuals uh, but through events that we're going to be holding, uh, but we will be going after the Rotary Club and uh, as well as the Minor Sports and the Trillium Foundation, which just put $53 million for a back-to-sport uh, infrastructure build. Uh, Canadian Tire Jumpstart we're already speaking to. Uh, we think uh, that our gap uh, can easily be met and that we will have what we think is the best basketball court in the county. Uh, and we hope that this will spur on additional growth of the sport and give our youth an opportunity to participate in what we think is a great activity. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, uh, Brian, for the presentation. Um, I will ask you just to stay on the line as we advance through our agenda. You're the next, our next item, item four is a report of our manager of recreation and marketing and item 4.1 being the community outdoor basketball court. So before you, we have um, a staff report and staff recommendation. Uh, is there any questions from the committee at this time regarding the, the presentation and the staff report. Councillor Clifford. Yeah, I was just gonna ask, is it asphalt or cement or what kind of court are we having here? Is it like a porous court? Or... Uh, it, will, it will be a concrete base, but then it'll be covered by a sport court, uh, which is an all weather sport court. It also is, uh, prevents or mitigates any injury. Uh, so that it, it is, actually, I think, uh, you're familiar with one that a sport court that was put in in Shakespeare recently. So it's a, it's a uh, plastic type uh, uh, substance. Councillor Burback. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much for your presentation. Um, I'm very excited about this proposal. Um, I think it's a much needed uh, addition to Stratford sports. Um, I do have a resident expert and uh, in my house and I had him look over the, the presentation and he's, he's really excited about it, uh, especially with the lighting and everything and that it's a full size NBA court. Uh, his only request was that the rim would not be, a, the rims on the net would not be double rims. I guess the ones that were installed last year near the Y are double rimmed and they're very stiff. So apparently that's not so great. Um, so I just thought I'd pass that piece of information along. Um, I see that you do have NBA Canada possibly donating the, the nets and rims and all of that. So I'm sure that they would know what the best type is. But I just thought I'd pass that little piece of information along. Council, your husband is a wise basketball man and that they will not be double rims. Okay, thank you. Actually, it's my son, 15 year old. So okay. yeah, sorry. Is there any further questions or comments? If not, there is a staff recommendation that council support the development of a community outdoor basketball court on the grounds at the Stratford Education Recreation Complex. Is there a move of Councillor Clifford? If there's no other questions or comments, I'll, I'll call the question, all in favor? And that is carried, thank you very much. And again, thank you, Lori, thank you, Brian, for your presentation. And I'm, I'm trying to uh, keep my poker face here, but um, I, I'm very excited about this project as well as uh, uh, once upon a time basketball player. Uh, I'm looking forward to this and, and for our community to have a, another facility to play uh, the great sport of basketball. So thank you again for your time and effort on this. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Item five is a report of the manager of transit. Item 5.1 be the delegation of authority to sign the bus stop 
and shelter agreement. Uh, we have our manager of transit, uh, Mike Mosley, with us here. Uh, Mike, do you want to give a quick update on this, please? Uh, sure, absolutely. Through the chair. Um, basically, this is a, a standard agreement um, that uh, basically just gives staff authority to execute uh, agreements um, when city assets are placed on private lands. Um, it is just for uh, insurance purposes. It protects the corporation, it protects the public, and it protects the, the landowner that, that the assets um, that, that sit on. So basically, um, the authority is so that we can execute these agreements as we have, um, especially after uh, the, the next shelter projects go in uh, later this summer, that there are actually some shelters that are on some uh, private owned properties. Thank you. So there is a staff recommendation there, uh, moved by Councillor Burback. Questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Item number six is the department update. Uh, Dave, if I would, if you wouldn't mind, could you just provide a, a quick review of, of your um, report there? Uh, uh, thank you, sure, I'd be glad to. Um, uh, most of the work in uh, parks, um, you will notice that the hanging baskets are focused in the downtown area. Um, seems to be some great um, comments compared to that. Um, for capital, uh, we're not only parks, but in others, we're still continuing on and we should hit our target by uh, completing our capital projects by the end of the year. Cemetery is operating as it always has been with a, a buzzer system or a by appointment. Um, cemetery road repairs, um, not sure they have started yet, but they, uh, they will be started shortly and um, that'll be a good addition to the cemetery. Um, Mike, our transit manager provides numbers for you as compared to last year. And you can see they're, they're similar. and Hopefully they will increase as we move out of the pandemic. Again, parallel transit provides uh, ridership numbers and uh, my estimates at about 48% of normal. And again, those numbers should increase as we start to open up in stage three and as we move further. Our uh, recreation programming is, um, you know, as of June, we are um, doing the online uh, work. The Lions Pool is open, summer camp has started. Um, we're working with sports groups, although as of tomorrow, and things are kind of going to change and we'll be open up a lot more than we have been in the past. So as of tomorrow, uh, what does that mean? So in general, um, in the indoor facilities start to open up and we it's looking at about 50% of capacity. So our plan is to um, slowly open up at the Agriplex. And uh, the reason why it'll be slowly open is that is where we've been operating on our uh, programs out of and we want to be careful about cross-contamination or usage in the agriplex but um, that'll be working on a strategy to uh, open up as best we can of course on friday bingo will be open at a 50 percent capacity um, we are planning to open our arena one arena but by the first week of august um, and amazingly enough our phone has been ringing steadily with uh, ice bookies um, Walking track, uh, unfortunately, will uh, remain closed as um, operating the vaccination clinic and the testing center up here, it um, causes some confusion in terms of access to the, um, the walking track. Uh, one of our biggest challenges is even if we use another door, um, the elevator is not available. So that causes some problems. So at this point, we'll keep the walking track closed. The way the vaccination clinics are going, it looks like um, by the winter time that the walking track will probably be open. For hockey, um, we will be using separate entrances and separate exits um, along the side of the building that we will maintain well marked and um, it shouldn't interfere with um, the vaccination clinic. It certainly will be a learning curve as everything is, but uh, we hope it will slowly change to they'll get the, the hint that there will be a side door. And also, um, we have a, a fitness center upstairs 
they will be using also a separate entrance. And again, they will be at a 50% capacity. And I think that's it. Thank you, Dave. Um, and I appreciate the, uh, the update. I do have, I guess, a, a follow-up to that. You've started to um, share what it looks like starting tomorrow with, with the stage three. And I think it's a, a, a good way for which we're proceeding in terms of um, cautious optimism I'll use in terms of uh, slowly um, getting our facilities open and uh, but doing it safely. I guess at the same time, we want to ensure that uh, we do uh, get our facilities brought online. And I've had some questions um, regarding our, our indoor sports facility, uh, the Agriplex, and, and whether or not um, we will be allowing um, teams to, to start to practice or play uh, basketball or volleyball in, in that facility. Is there any um, thoughts moving forward over the course of the next several weeks, months, as to how we might be able to enable that to happen? Um, certainly, we've given it some thought. And, um, you know, normally they don't uh, participate in the summer because it's turned into a barn, uh, basically. But in um, the past two years now, uh, we haven't removed the floor. So the good news is the floor is still there. Um, the building is air conditioned, so that helps. Um, I guess from our end, the challenge that we'll have to work out before we um, start the sports is uh, how we uh, integrate them with our, uh, our youth uh, camps. So certainly on uh, our manager of recreations radar, and uh, again, we will, we will look probably slowly in August to uh, get some sports started. That'd be great, thank you. Councillor Clifford. Yeah, I was just gonna ask our director, are they planning to have junior hockey in the Omen? Is it, is it in the works for the fall? Uh, uh, through the chair, as best I know, um, that Junior B Hockey League will be starting in September. Um, as we've done in the past year, I believe, or maybe two, uh, we have initially started practices for the Warriors at the um, Rotary Complex and had the um, Allman Arena open by the first week of September and then they moved out. Councillor Burback, Councillor Henderson, anything else before we wrap? No, you're good. Councillor Henderson, you're okay. So, uh, Dave, if I understand correctly, then um, the director, or sorry, the manager of, of recreation, Mr. Hernan, um, he'll be looking to put a strategy forward as to how uh, we can uh, bring on the Agriplex for, for sports use uh, within the, the Agriplex. That's correct. I can't really give you a time frame, but we'll certainly work towards uh, integrating them back into the agriplex. Great. Okay. Thank you. If there's uh, no further uh, questions or comments regarding that. Uh, item seven is the advisory and committee outside uh, board minutes that were brought forward for your attention. Our next subcommittee meeting is scheduled for Thursday, August the 12th at 3.30 p.m. If there's nothing further, I'd accept a motion to adjourn. Councillor Henderson, all in favor? And that is carried. Thank you everyone, have a safe summer.